Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ken Corley, and I would like to thank the deputies for their comments and contributions to this very important debate. And deputies have highlighted the importance of the supporting our defence forces in capability and development, and the primary function of training and education in the defence forces is to develop and maintain capabilities necessary to enable uh, personnel to fulfil the roles laid out uh, by uh, government. And as I stated in my opening statement, the Defence Forces specialist search and clearance teams are regularly deployed at home and uh, overseas in different missions. Examples of recent such deployments at home include the uh, papal visit, uh, the British royalty uh, in 2011, and the US uh, Vice President more recently. And there have also been a number of searches for the bodies of missing persons and more uh, conventional operations against paramilitary uh, groups and criminal organisations. There are two Defence Forces Specialist Search and Clearance Teams operating overseas in UNDUF and in UNIFIL, and they predominantly conduct uh, route searches and uh, area, area clearances in advance of vehicle or uh, foot patrols. The Government's White Paper on Defence, published in August of 2015, states that Ireland will identify opportunities uh, to participate in multinational capability deployment projects within the framework uh, of the European Defence Agency in support of the Defence Forces' operations, uh, capacity and capability. Uh, the European Defence Agency is focused on assisting member states in capability development, in obtaining better value for existing spending levels, improving competitiveness and securing greater efficiency, particularly in the area of uh, research, technology and procurement of defence capabilities. Ireland's participation in the project is a prime example of how defence forces can further develop their engineer specialist um, search and clearance uh, capability to an advanced level and provide a pathway for ensuring uh, sustainment uh, of the skills in uh, to the future. I have already outlined uh, tonight, I know, uh, the Deputy from Sinn Féin about um, 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 the EU uh, Army. I have addressed that in, a, in, in an earlier uh, debate this evening. I thought, Deputy, that you would be delighted to see me here um, uh, week in, week out. Uh, debating against you and I know we have difference of opinions and I absolutely um, respect uh, your opinions. I have no problem with your opinions. We might differ with them and that's what an acting democracy is all about and that's why this parliament is here. Uh, but I would absolutely refute your, when you, when you uh, quoted uh, Deputy Sean Barrett from my own party uh, about peacekeeping and I refuted his comments last week at uh, the, the committee. Peacekeeping has totally changed. The threat that we face today is totally different from the threat in the 70s and 80s uh, when we began peacekeeping first. And I can assure you, Deputy Daly, that if we went out with the same equipment that we did peacekeeping in the Congo back in the 60s, if we wouldn't last very long. We wouldn't last very long, I can assure you, right? And I'm, I'm totally being honest and honest and upfront and frank with you, that we have to be able to move uh, with the times, that the threat we face today, let it be in Unifil, UNDUF, let it be EUTM, Mali, or whatever, let it be in the Congo, the threats we face today are totally different. And that is why it is so important that we work as Deputy, uh, uh, um, uh, Deputy White Barrett said, and I will say it again, with like-minded states, because these like-minded states are participating in peacekeeping, no, in peacekeeping duties as well. I'm actually very disappointed that you didn't thank me for your birthday wishes and everything like that. But, uh, but, uh, well, uh, well, it says that on Wikipedia, which is slightly more easy to be identified than Wikipedia. I also say, it notes that you're 51 years of age. I always thought you were in around 26, 27. Maybe that's wrong as well. Uh, but uh, Ireland's participation uh, Ireland's participation in the European Defence Agency affords us uh, the opportunity uh, to keep abreast of best practice, and I genuinely say that, best practice, and new developments in the defence environment and on military capabilities uh, for our defence uh, uh, forces um, to undertake the roles assigned to them uh, by government. And I've always said it, I'll state it again, just once more for the record, that if anything happened, any member of our defence forces, let it be overseas, let it be at home, I can assure you, Deputy By Barrett, Deputy Daly, Deputy Wallace will be the first people, and Sinn Féin will be the first people, uh, will be hauling me into this house here, 
uh, for accountability. That is why I am proud that we give uh, members of our Defence Forces the best equipment, uh, the best capabilities uh, the, uh, uh, that, that, that is out there, and more importantly, the best training. And that is why we uh, train with like-minded states, that we, interoperability, that we are able to go out and participate in UNIFIL, UNDUF, EUT and Mali, let it be on the Mediterranean with our, with our naval service. That we have, Thank you, uh, we have the experience uh, of being able uh, to participate with, with other states. And I can, I, I, as I stated previously, wouldn't there be something wrong that if we didn't uh, train, that if we didn't uh, uh, work with like-minded states, I think it is so important that we do so, and I think it is so important that we, that we continue to do so. And let me say, uh, 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 Ken Corla, uh, I commend uh, this very important uh, motion to the House, and I am proud to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.